Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5.30. We start with breaking news tonight. An Amber Alert was just issued to help find a 15-month-old child whose mother is suspected of taking her from a Minnesota daycare. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. Andrea has the evening off. The child was taken yesterday afternoon in Ramsey, Minnesota. That's just outside of the Twin Cities. Officials say they now have reason to believe both the child and her mother are in danger, saying the mother was threatening to kill herself. Officials say daycare staff didn't know the mother recently lost custody of the toddler. They may be traveling in a 2004 black Honda Civic license plate 386HUJ. Anyone with information should call 911. She, what are you doing? We're approved. Oh, I just got a text from Liz. We're approved. Big news today. An apartment complex for homeless families will be built in Moorhead. Churches United for the Homeless says they'll break ground in the spring for this 43-unit building. The group received a $7.3 million grant to help fund the project from the Minnesota Housing Finance Agency. Just last year, the group was denied that grant. The new apartment will be built on 34th Avenue near Cashwise and Moorhead. Churches United says they are beyond happy about the grant and that housing is needed. We have turned away since mid-April over 250 families. Uh, so because of that need, we are anxious to get this building built so that those families can have homes. The apartment building has been approved by the city and the next step is construction, but news of this new building has brought a mixture of feelings, some happy, some upset. Valley News Team's Ashley Bishop spoke with nearby homeowners about the new complex. There are some people that support this project and feel it needs to be in our community, in our backyard for it to work. Others disagree and don't want to see it in their backyard literally not knowing who's going to be living right in their backyard and the only access they've got to anything to the west is through our complex here so are you afraid of foot traffic coming through well foot traffic traffic vandalism i mean for some homeowners in the senior community right next to where the new complex will go they are concerned one of the biggest worries is where the building is being placed. You look off to the east, we're going to see a three-story building and no sun. They've got 10 acres there. Not everyone is completely against the complex. I can see uh, how desperately this type of, uh, of uh, conditions, living conditions are needed. And uh, uh, at the same time, I can understand people being hesitant about it. Well, if it's not in your own backyard, where else is it going to be like? People in your own community need help, and if you can't give it to them and somebody is able to, and it's a way to do that, then why not? Churches United says they have seen more community support compared to a year ago, but acknowledge there are concerns about the upcoming change. We believe that we've shown that we are really good neighbors, and we are committed to working with our neighbors to make it the best um, possible outcome as, as possible. In Moorhead, Ashley Bishop, Valley News Live. The FM Coalition for the Homeless says the biggest number of homeless they see are families and young people between age 18 and 25. Today, a survey was completed in the FM area seeing how large the homeless population is here. The FM Coalition and Churches United say one of the common reasons that people are homeless is because there's not enough affordable housing or many applicants run into housing restrictions like bad credit or prior convictions. New into our newsroom now, police have released surveillance video from the burglary at Kmart in Grand Forks. The video shows the suspect wearing what appears to be a dark hooded sweatshirt which was pulled over his head and dark pants. The burglary happened on Tuesday morning and it's unknown how the suspect got into the store. They were able to get away with products from several departments. Anyone with information is asked to contact Grand Forks Police. Well, it has been a good broken record in the weather department recently. And yet again, we've got a nice evening shaping up for us in parts of the valley. Let's see what the rest of the night is going to be like. Hutch? Thank you so much, Stephanie. Look at the temperatures across North Dakota, ranging from the low 60s to 70 in Williston this hour. 
It's very nice across portions of southern Minnesota, too, and it looks like we're going to enjoy quiet weather through the evening. Here is a look at our time lapse. Shows a little fire up there burning north of town. A lot of burning, agricultural burning going on across the region lately. So, some smoke filled skies right there. You can see in the background of our planning forecast. Uh, layer of thick smoke. Temperatures cooling into the uh, 50s as we go through the dark hours tonight. Southeast winds will continue at 10 miles per hour overnight. Big changes. Look what's coming our way, Stephanie. A lot of rain. Boy, it's dry around here. I'll tell you how much we get when it starts, how long it lasts. All coming up in a moment. So we need a little bit of that rain. It wouldn't hurt. Yeah. All right. Thanks so much. A question if racism was behind an East Grand Forks controversy. We have new information regarding a teacher who was put on paid administrative leave, then reinstated yesterday. Teacher Brian Perkins wrote an email criticizing poor attendance by Somali students. He said it forced him to reteach things and hold back the rest of class. Valley News Team's Neil Carlson shows us the latest on all of this. This is the email sent to teachers and administrators that got longtime East Grand Forks teacher Brian Perkins in trouble. Did someone file a complaint against Mr. Perkins because they thought the email was racist or did Superintendent Pace take it upon himself to put Mr. Perkins on leave because he thought the email may have been racist? I think the best way to answer that would be that Mr. Pace put, put uh, Brian Perkins on paid leave pending investigation. Paul Mussino says legally he cannot discuss any specifics about this case. Paul Mussino says Perkins wound up missing five days of school. He says he's sorry all of this took so long to get wrapped up, but he says there were other factors involved. All of this started just at the beginning of the long teachers convention weekend. Paul Mussino says it was tough getting all the union reps and lawyers together in one place. They did meet yesterday. Or yeah, Wednesday afternoon, at, I think it was noon hour, and then they came to agreement and he reinstated him. Again, no comment on whether this incident resulted in any type of action against teacher Brian Perkins, who's back in the classroom. In East Grand Forks, Neil Carlson, Valley News Live. In his email to teachers and administrators, Perkins suggested better attendance would be a solution to his classroom problems. School Board Chairman Tony Palmasino also says that attendance has been an issue for a long time. He says it's something the board is looking into. Meanwhile, some students who took part in a protest outside East Grand Forks Senior High yesterday in support of that teacher are now facing punishment. The students said they were protesting the way the incident involving the teacher was handled by administration. But Superintendent Dave Pace has declined to comment However, a parent tells us students who walked out of class to take part in this protest are now being given detention. A long-awaited testimony of former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton has arrived in front of the House Select Committee in Benghazi. Accusations were flying today, tempers rising. Clinton sitting in front of a divided Select Committee on Benghazi. At the end of the morning session, Clinton didn't have to speak at all as committee members attacked one another diverting attention from Clinton. When they were questioning the secretary, many accusations of negligence were hurled her way. Clinton wanted the room to know, though, that what happened in 2012 has affected her. I've lost more sleep than all of you put together. I have been racking my brain about what more could have been done or should have been done. Now, the hearing began at 10 a.m., and it is still going on. Moorhead police are doing an internal review after a police squad car was involved in a crash overnight. Police say reviews are required in all crashes where a squad car is involved. The officer had his lights on and was getting into position to help a Clay County deputy make a traffic stop. When the police officer collided with another vehicle at 1st Avenue and 11th Street North just before 2 a.m. The vehicle that was hit by the squad car ended up on its roof, but no one was hurt. Police were trying to pull over this man, Dwayne Finday, for speeding. He was eventually arrested for driving after revocation and fleeing police. Nobody was hurt in this crash. Before you find that perfect Halloween costume, the Better Business Bureau has some advice to make sure you're not haunted by a scammer. They say go to the source, like a costume shop that's open year-round. Do your research. Look up the company before you buy. Read the fine print. Make sure you understand the company's refund and return policies. 
And if you decide to rent a costume, make sure you understand the rules for renting and return your costume on time. The NDSU football team is not the only group competing this weekend. NDSU Rodeo Club hosting the 50th Bison Stampede Rodeo Friday and Saturday. More than a dozen schools will be competing in events like barrel racing, bareback riding, and calf roping. Students competing are trying to move on to the college national finals. The event starts Friday at 7, then again Saturday at 1 and 7 p.m. It's kind of our um, connection to agriculture, really. It's our way to showcase our skills and that we use out on our farms and ranches. So it's really our livelihood. The event is $10 for adults, 4 for kids 6 to 12. For more information, go to valleynewslive.com and click on our hot button for a link to their schedule. A beloved children's TV show adds a new face to the crowd. The message that she's sharing is coming up. A beautiful, quiet, and dry evening. But overnight, things change in a big way. I'll have details on rainfall moving into the valley and your planning forecast for the weekend ahead right after this.